how do you calculate the equilibrium constant? So as I mentioned in the very beginning, the Kc and Kp, they are actually all equivalent to the equilibrium constant. Just the unit you use, okay, will make it, will define is actually a Kc or Kp, okay? And I'll just give you two examples so you can see the things more clearly. Okay, so the question is actually, okay, for the following equilibrium concentration was observed for a process, which is this reaction, a certain temperature, where we know the concentration of each species is equal to a certain number. Calculate the K. The first things when you see this chemical equation, okay, make sure equation is balanced. OK. Once you know the equation is balanced, then you can actually write out your law of action OK, based on your uh, chemical equations, right? So again, water on the top, reaction at the bottom, you always need to raise to the power that associated with the coefficients. OK, once you have this, the next thing is actually just plug in the concentrations. Then you can actually get the correct answers for your equilibrium constant. So here, if you look at the unit, the unit is actually all molarity, right? So molarity is actually one of the most commonly seen unit you're going to see in this chapter. So once you see these concentration terms, you know the K you calculate must be Kc. So when are you going to see Kp? OK, so the main difference between this and the previous question is that the unit it provides is not a typical concentration unit we have learned in Chapter 10. So here is actually a unit of pressure, right? ATM, bar, par, OK? So all of things is actually the unit of pressure. When you calculate the equilibrium constant, OK, instead of using concentration, what you're going to use is actually using the pressure now. OK, so because you are using pressure to calculate your equilibrium constant, then this is actually Kp, not Kc anymore. But that's the only difference between the two. As long as you pay attention to the unit, you will know you, what you have is like Kc or Kp. OK, so these two are very sim the simplest question you're going to encounter for this chapter. Calculate your Kp and Kc based on the equations and conditions you were given in the question. The things that got more interesting or trickier is actually in your homework. Conversion between Kp and Kc is something you're going to get tested. OK, so how do you actually convert the Kp into Kc? Okay. The concept you should have is actually you need to know the ideal gas law. OK, for this conversion. Well, P is actually the pressure, right? V is actually the volume. NRT, M is number of mole, R is just a constant, T is just temperature. If you move N to the right hand side, OK, then you got this P equals to N over VRT, right? And this will give you a concentration M times R times T. So that means if you want to convert the pressure into concentration, the main difference is actually there's actually a difference in terms of RT, right? So this is actually the parts that you need to actually plug in into the conversion. Let's use this as example. This is actually the equilibrium, the Kp we define in our second example. Kp is actually P angle Cl to the seconds power divided by P angle seconds power and then PCL2, OK? So using this one, I can rewrite the things in terms of concentration. What I do is actually I convert this into this concentration times your RT to the seconds power. And then you do the same thing for your reactants. So once you do that, what I do next is actually I pull out all the concentration terms together. I put all the RT terms together. OK, so this is to be raised to a second's power. 
So once I do that, I know this is going to equals to my KC, right? And the all the remaining thing is actually just my RT correction terms. They allow me to actually convert my KC to KP or vice versa. To generalize this idea, this is what you should do. Okay, assuming today you have a uh, chemical reactions, then if assuming you can calculate its KP and the KC, and they can correlate with each other with this equation. So your KP is going to equal to your KC multiply RT to certain power. So the key thing is actually, do you know how to calculate this delta N? So the delta N was calculated by the sum of coefficient of your product minus the sum of your coefficient of your reactant in the gas phase. OK, so let's use this as an example. 2NO gas plus Cl2 gas, that giving you 2NO Cl gas. The delta N will be the coefficient of the product in the gas form. In this case, it will be 2, right? Minus the coefficients of your reactor in the gas form. Coefficient of the reactor in the gas form is two plus one, right? That's the two, that's the one. So if you calculate this, you know your delta N is going to equals to two minus three equals to negative one. Therefore, you know, using these equations, you know your KP to equal to your KC, multiply your RT to the negative one power. And then this is going to equal to KC times one over RT, which is actually the same answers you got previously. The key thing here is actually to actually memorize this equation so that you will have no problem with the conversion between KP and KC. You should actually know how to calculate your delta N. It is actually sum of the coefficient of your product minus the sum of coefficient of your reactant in the gas phase. The very last thing we want to talk about today is actually this page. So one of the questions you're going to see a lot in this chapter is that uh, when given a chemical equation, you are going to define your equilibrium constant really based on the coefficients of each species, right? So if today you actually change the coefficients of your chemical reaction, even though it's the same reaction, your equilibrium constant will change accordingly. So on this slide, the things we want to learn is actually we want to learn, okay, If today I just do some simple multiplication of my chemical reactions, how will I actually change your K value? There are three rules that you need to memorize. Okay, assuming today you have a chemical reaction AA plus BB that gives you CC plus BD, and it has its associate equilibrium constant K1. Rule number one. If today I reverse this reaction, okay? Once you reverse this reaction, so you actually got a new equilibrium constant associated with the new equations. And then I want to know how this K, let's say this is K2, okay, is related to the original K1. From the things we learn, we know Okay, for this reaction, I can write the K2 is simply equals to product is A to the A's power, B to the B's power, C to the C's power, D to the D's power. Right, I know that's how I'm going to write my K2. 
because right now the product is your A and B, right? Reacting sector C and D. For your K1 is actually C to the C's power, D to the D's power, A to the A's power, B to the B's power, right? So you know the K1 and K2, they are actually related, right? Which we know the K1, K2 is simply equals to Inverse of your K1, right? Okay, you make your numerator not become your denominator, right? So you know if you switch your chemical reaction, then the new equilibrium constant will be actually the reciprocal numbers of the original equilibrium constant. Okay, so that's the first rule that you need to memorize. Okay, if you flip the reaction direction, okay. Then the new equilibrium constant will be just a reciprocal numbers of the original equilibrium constant. Rule number two is that, okay, assuming today compared to my reference equation, okay, which is the one I highlight here, AA plus BB that give you CC plus DD. Okay, if I multiply a coefficient to like whole equations, in this case, I just multiply a factor m, right? I multiply a factor of m to this original equation, okay? Then, the new equilibrium constant K3 is going to equal to c to the c's power times n, d to the d's power times n, divided by a to the a's power times n, b to the b's power times n, okay? And this can be written as c to the c's power, d to the d's power, over a to the a's power, b to the b's power, to the n's power. And we know this term is just your k1 to the n's power. In other words, if today you just multiply your original equation by a factor of n, then the new equilibrium constant K3 okay, is going to equal to K1 to the nth power. Okay, so let's actually the rule number two. You need to actually memorize. Okay, rule number three. If today you have a reaction AA that becomes CC, BB that become DD and this have a equilibrium constant K1 and an equilibrium constant K2. And then if today I adding up so that I have AA plus BB that give me CC plus DD. Okay, so what I do is actually I add these two things up. Then I have a new equilibrium constant K3. And this K3 is going to equal to K1 multiply K2. Okay, so that's actually your rule number three. Okay, if you have two chemical reactions when you add it up, then the new equilibrium constant K3 it's going to equal to the product of the original rate constant of each individual equation. So these three rules, you need to actually memorize it, okay? And then we're going to apply the things we learned right now for one example. So if you look at these equations, so it says, this, this question says, okay, for these specific reactions, I have a rate constant of certain values. And then you want you to estimate the, not the value, the equilibrium constant of these three reactions. When you look at this equation, then you want to compare to your reference equation. What's the difference between these two equations? The equations that you see here, okay, when you compare to your original equation, you can see that it's actually the same, but you multiply one half 
right? So if you multiply one half of your original equation, you've got the this target equations. Then the new equilibrium constant K, let's call this K1, okay? Should equal to your original equilibrium constant raised to one half of power. So this is actually using the rule number two to do this calculation. Okay, how about this? How is this related to your given equations? The first thing you should see that is actually, this is actually your product, not become a reactant, right? Let me say actually the reaction has been flipped. Right, so that's such a first thing. So we know when you actually flip the reactions, you will be actually the reciprocal of the original K. How about a coefficient? You go from two to one. That means actually you multiply one half again. Right? So that means actually your new K is going to equals to your original K multiplied by one half because you reverse your reactions. So you need to have a negative sign, go with it. Okay, so again, this is actually using the rule number two, right? And this is a combined rule number one and the rule number two. The very last one. It's again rule number two, right? Because you can see the coefficients go from two to three, right? So you know your k is going to equal to your k1 raised to the two thirds of power. All right, so this will be the questions you're going to see very often, okay, in your homework.